Hey everybody, this is Tin Tim, that is T-I-N is in Nana Nana Boo Boo, T-I-M is in Major Look, um, I am America's terminally insightful drag queen public intellectual, aka the Cornell motherfucking west of drag, coming to you again this week, um, and in face. Um, Courtney Act is, Courtney Act is in town performing here in Chicago tonight, and I'm gonna go see her, and I wanted to go in face, um, uh, it was, I was able to squeeze it in tonight, and so yay, I thought I would record my video at the same time. Um, yay! Um, I was also, coincidentally, um, or what have you, um, I was also in face, uh, last night, um, for a performance that I did, which, um, I will, uh, link to right now, because I'd love for you all to go watch it. It's already uploaded on YouTube. I did, um, a performance about... The desire to become a sex cyborg. Um, anyway, episode three. Episode three. Um, I'm gonna interpretate it for all of y'all. <laughs> Gee, gun. Um, and I think I'm still gonna try to leave this video unedited, um, even though I am in face. Um, I still, you know, my time is still a little pressed right now, so, and y'all seem to be responding well to the unedited thing. I don't know why. I guess y'all are like some masochists of some kind uh, to want to sit through all of that. But, um, first major thing about this episode is it's now like 100% clear to me that my prediction of last week is absolutely going to come to pass. Um, you know, that being that this will be a season in which generational conflict is sort of the overarching storyline across the season and dredging up um, tensions, conflict issues across generations. We saw that made very explicit this week um, in both halves of the um, episode, in the regular episode, as well as Untucked. So there were a few storylines related to that um, and I thought I would kind of, um, as a way of framing the video, like dig into those. So, one was um, the story about Vivacious, um, which on the one hand, like I think I said um, in my, my first video, it does feel like the show, or at least Rue, if not the broader production and editors, etc., um, are paying, um, Rue and Michelle, are paying appropriate respect to Vivacious for what she represents and her sort of, um, her sort of moment in, or like the sort of moment, movement, whatever, that she represents in drag history and um, respecting her, um, you know, her, her elder status and experience and all of that. Um, um, at the same time, the story that uh, I felt like we were told about her this week is if you are going to be an elder, shall we say, a states lady, um, that you, you can't get too stuck in your style. If you're still too stuck in the old ways and you don't adapt and innovate and stay vital with the times, then, um, you know, you, you are um, not going to move forward in the competition. And um, it is a very particular way of framing the narrative about why she had to go home, right? Because I wouldn't say, um, I love Vivacious. Um, I think she brought such personality to the show. Um, and obviously I love Club Kid Drag. Um, as I think I said in my first video, her execution I didn't think was always the finest, and um, you know it could be a little bit hobby lobby ticky tacky occasionally um, and all of that, and um, because of that, um, I didn't expect her necessarily to go far in the competition. It would have been fun to have her for a few more episodes, but be that as it may, um, the. Um, the unedited thing is going to get harder the further we get into the season because it gets more complicated to talk about it. Um, the other thing I remembered is that when I do these in face, um, I have been in the bathroom working for two and a half to three hours, and my brain is not as sharp as when I, like, bam, get up as a boy, and um, it gives you a respect, sort of, I think, for, for anyone who has to, like, um, kind of talk um, in drag and carry on a conversation. But, um, vivacious. Um... Yeah, um, so I don't know if, if it's fair to say, um, you know, her look is dated, she's stuck in the past. It, it is derivative to a certain extent of other artists, 
but um, you know, I think the bigger issue is that sort of um, that sort of lack of precision or fine tunedness or whatever to the execution. But they chose to tell a story about um, you know her not um, not updating her style um, and her style being stuck in the past, which um, you know sort of emphasized or foregrounded the generational piece in a way that wasn't necessarily necessary to do what they wanted to do with her. Um, and um, it also seemed clear to me that they were ready to have her go this episode, um, as a lot of people have pointed out, like on Reddit and other places, the way they edited that, that challenge, um, the video, there was absolutely no reason to show her missing her line and did not edit that takeout. Um, I thought that was sort of unnecessarily embarrassing to her in a way, um, but it definitely set it up for her to be the one, um, the one that went this week. Um, so that's one story that was clearly a generational story. It's this one about vivacious and, and you know, keeping your look up to date. Um, the second one um, is, this, is this story about Adore Delano and, uh, oh, the arrogance of youth, right? Um, this whole thing that, uh, you know, as a young person, Adore can, um, as a young person who's very talented, has a lot of natural talent, Adore has, you know, slid by, um, you know, skated by on, on chutzpah and personality and um, without necessarily putting all of the work, preparation, discipline that's required to really, um, to really shine and um, to reach her full potential, right? And um, I didn't, at least judging from this episode, I didn't necessarily disagree with that assessment at all. Like, I was actually thinking to myself, wow, um, because Adore performed so well in the video, and you could see that happening as they were um, as they were filming it, even though um, she was a mess, the team she didn't work with her team well, she didn't have her lines down, um, she still did really well. And uh, I remember thinking, wow, Adore has so much natural talent. It's really sort of strategy and discipline more than anything that she that she needs to develop. And um, so I w my head was kind of already there before we said it. This was actually a case of me agreeing. Um, pretty much with what was what was being said about Adore. Again, you know, I'm seeing what they what they show us, but be that as it may. I said be that as it may twice. That's what Michelle Visage calls a vocal crutch, um, you know, in her extensive broadcast history. She has learned how to be aware of these things. Um, I heard that on a, in an interview with Michelle once. So the third um, generational storyline that stuck out to me um, then was a direct counterpoint to Adore's storyline, and that was about Trinity. And um, we saw Trinity being um, not uh, super confident um, about her acting ability, being really nervous about this challenge, being prepared to, you know, go home to lip sync. Um, and yet, um, what was pointed out was that she, despite not having training in acting, she prepared, um, she took criticism well. So um, she was kind of the counter, being held up as like the counter example to Adore. It's like, even though you're not naturally good at this, you're this disciplined queen. Um, and that was further emphasized, right, on Untucked when, um, when she was like, uh, when she, um, you know, told them, you know, I'm ready to limp sync. I've got my outfit on underneath it. How much when you heard her say that, did you want her to actually have to lip sync, to have had to have lip synced so that you could see her tear away and see what she had prepared? Um, that would have been great, but, um, yeah, so, um, you know, Trinity is the disciplined young person, Adore is the, um, is, you know, Adore is the undisciplined young person, um, and again, everything's about, uh, experience, generation, um, um, you know, conflict between and across age groups. And then obviously there were the smaller skirmishes between Bianca and Trinity, um, over the Beyonce thing, where, where age and experience was also brought up. And then again, later during Untucked, between um, Bianca and Adore again. Um, and uh, so, um, you know, it seems very clear that that's going to be a major storyline this season. Whether or not it was consciously part of the casting, and whether that means that it will consciously become part of the game, as in, like, Generation gets brought explicitly into the challenges or eliminations in some way, I think remains to be seen, but it is very clear that that's, um, 
you know, going to be a, a thread or a trend um, throughout the season. And although there are some slightly uh, potentially obnoxious things about it, um, you know, including the way that that Vi sort of, I keep calling her Vi, but I don't think she actually goes by that. The way that Vivacious sort of got set up this episode, um, you know, there were clearly like some troubling aspects of that, um, I think, to a lot of fans. I, I think that on the whole, I am thus far finding it a lot more entertaining, a lot more compelling than um, some of the conflicts that we've seen um, in the last couple seasons, last season especially. Um, it, uh, it just feels like the show has got its sort of like energy and vitality back in some way that's been missing, at least for me, for a while, or I'm having a lot of fun watching it again. Um, it, uh, you know, it still has predictable elements, but it feels a little less canned, and, and I'm like, that's right, this is why this show is so much fun. And, so, yeah, I just, I'm a big fan of season six so far, and it's just such an, um, um, it's a, you know, fun and, like, an interesting and, um, in some way strange mix of queens and I um yeah I'm looking forward to the rest of the season so I think that is all I have for this week um if I was taking notes like I have in previous years I might have more but uh I've kind of you know I'm determined to just enjoy the show and then think of what I think of later this time so that uh, you know it isn't um so I don't have to constantly be in critic mode so Take it, um, take what you will from it. Um, absolutely. Much love to you all. Mwah.